So, hello and welcome to my commentary walkthrough of my 3D games design, um, the game that I've made for 3D games design using the T framework, and I'm going to be playing through a little bit, getting to the end of what I've created so far, and going through my thoughts and decisions as I was setting up the map and everything like that. So, instantly we can see that we're trapped in this room with no way to actually get out, the doors won't open. And that's because in order to actually leave the room, we're going to need to get rid of this guy who will open this door for us. Now that we're outside of this room, we can get into this one, the door opens, and the next thing to do is to clear this room. It's inspired by a lot of a lot of different roguelike games like Enter the Gungeon, Binding of Isaac, um, Dead Cells for one. With that sort of every every single time it's different procedurally generated rooms and enemies and different power ups that you can collect. Let's just get rid of all of those. As you can see, there is a pickup for us to get here, which makes the bullets smaller and then deal a lot more damage if we can actually hit the enemies. There we go. There's another enemy here. See if we can lower him out of the, the zone. Perfect. Now, we get to see the many different uh, homemade things that I've done in order to change up the game a little bit. The red arrow that you can see on the player as it moves and faces with the direction the player is moving, it allows the player to dash by pressing the spacebar. And as we dash around the level, it means that we can fire backwards whilst running away from the things that we are currently firing at. Um, around the level, you'll see these red squares, sorry, red circles, that when you're inside, completely stops you from dashing. Now this is to sort of create pace itself and to stop you from just zooming around the level at 2 million miles per hour and allows the player to have to think about the environment that they are in as they are playing. <clears throat> Here we can see a power-up. Now the power-ups, um, I've got a, quite a few of them planned, however only two of them are currently implemented, the quick dash and the blink dash. Uh, they both uh, interact with the dash, and most power-ups will. The quick dash does exactly what you would think. It makes the dash cooldown quicker. It shortens the dash cooldown so I can dash every half second instead of every one. Or every two seconds, I can't believe. Um, but, to, because you can now dash a lot more often, it means that the dash itself is a shorter dash which is also still affected by the no dash zone. So, we can zoom through the level with our new dash, getting to another place, and we can see that the builds, so you can, the player can create builds around the different power-ups that they want. So, for example, if you prefer to zoom around enemies, run circles around them, firing at them all the way, then the quick dash might be more suited for you. Some players will stick to the original dash because they find it is a perfect balance between speed and distance. Now, the next dash that we have creates this glowing sort of arrow which gets stopped by objects and things. And that's because the next dash that we've picked up is the blink dash. And the blink dash does exactly what you would think it would do. It allows the character and replaces the dash with a short distance teleport. The short distance teleport is great for getting out of sticky situations. Oh, got exploded on. Great for getting out of sticky situations, teleporting away, getting behind cover, and you can even use it strategically to zoom behind enemies and fill them with lead. Of course, it's not for everyone. Let's get away from that. That's loud. Of 
course it's not for absolutely everyone because it requires a little bit more planning and a little bit more skill and players will probably decide that they don't want to think about that when they've got hordes of enemies running at them so players might think it would be best to stick with the blink dash once you've picked up a ability in order to drop that ability you will need to pick up another one so players will need to think about their actions of picking up abilities and things in this room we've got an example of loot as we hit pick up the loot we can get more armor and uh, we can also use it as oh run out of ammo again we can also use it as currency in the hub world the hub world is the world that you start in and it is the world that you enter the level and it acts as a sort of safe spot but, um, after every single failed run or after every single um, successful run and it contains shops it has a bunch of stuff of which you can use the money and the loot that you've gained in the maze and gain upgrade and things here we can see an example of um, a health pickup gives us 25 health and there's another one down here and then kill these enemies and move on now the next bit is oh I should mention the um, the blink dash cooldown the blink dash cooldown is a lot longer as you can tell I'm spamming space this entire time and it's not blinking um, because it's a larger distance blink and also it's a, it could be better than the normal dash in sort of certain circumstances uh, the blink dash cooldown is a lot longer once eventually we get through all of the rooms we come to a huge room with a giant boss in the middle and killing this boss oh god killing this boss is what we need to do to finish the floor and current this build of the game fi uh, finish the game so let's just see if we can the bosses obviously have different attacks oh i might don't want to die here see if we can kill the boss. Ah, there we go. So, we killed the boss and the game abruptly ends. Um, I've yet to figure out how to make it so that the end screen appears, but the game just abruptly ends and that is the current state of the level. Um, as you can see here, we can, do, we can zoom out and we can see the level itself. There's many rooms, there can be many offshoots, there'll be secret rooms, that you can get to and you can see that they're all divided by these rock like walls and, th and structures um, we can get close-ups and the things that the player won't see obviously is the voids the underneath and things where everything's a little bit more messy um, we can see all the enemies and we can see all of the uh, triggers and the objective managers and things that I have implemented to keep the game running and doing things um, it's not the most fleshed out in terms of mesh boxing and um, it's not the prettiest yet but I've tried to keep a overall theme of how the level is laid out how it looks how the lighting is and overall I think I've done a fairly good job of keeping keeping on theme the levels once you complete the level by killing the the boss over here um, you'll go down to another floor and the game will continue and continue and continue with these different floors all following different themes um, and that's what's basically gonna allow you to complete the game do a quick quick tour of the hub world right now it's just a block out um, the player can just exist in the hub world they would spawn here after every run and they would be able to run up the stairs and by going into this pit they would go into the next level these um, blocks of these colored blocks will represents what will eventually become shops and things as the player expands the hub world through playing the game um, <clears throat> the shops allow you to buy new upgrades new loot that you can find in the uh, in the levels 
and uh, there'll be NPCs and things that you can talk to here that will allow just general dialogue and expansion of the story to uphold itself. And apart from that, uh, the hub world basically just acts as the main menu screen, I guess, would probably be the, the best example to it. Um, obviously the player can't see the, uh, the void <laughs> out here, and it still needs to be fully meshed out and fully lit, lighted, lit, fully, eh, I don't know the word, but, um, it's getting on the way, so thank you for listening, and bye-bye.